or something, but uh, I think there's an electrician on the way, so once they get here, hopefully they'll be able to the power and be able to get some lights in here. Um, you know, for now we'll just make do while we've got a bit of daylight left. Um, so, you know, we're really fortunate to be able to have uh, Peter Lonigan here. Um, some of you guys probably know him, he's spent a lot of time in New South Wales. Uh, he's now the, uh, what is it, head, what is your title again? Head of High Performance Coach Development with Basketball Australia. It's a bit of a mouthful, but, uh, you know, essentially Pete's in, in charge of, uh, I guess, you know, overseeing the coaching and coach development, you know, in Australia now. Um, he's a great resource for us to be able to have, you know, to come here and work with you guys and hopefully, you know, work with our athletes and they'll get a lot out of this today as well. Um, you know, I guess a bit about his background before, you know, his role is currently in. Uh, Pete's done my job, so uh, he, I think it was, was it ITC back then? Yep. Head of, head coach of ITC for New South Wales. Um, he's also done that in big country and also in the Northern Territory. Uh, he has been a head coach of an Australian under 17 junior team um, and also an assistant coach uh, with a world championship winning Opals group, which is Australia's senior women. So, uh, you know, basketball in Australia is in very good hands with Pete in his current role. Um, and I guess I, yeah, if you guys join me in welcoming Pete and thank you. Thanks, Jen. Um, guys, it's usually about now I'd go into a really extensive preamble, talk about myself quite a bit um, and lead into it, but given that under the constraints we're under, I'll, I'll get rid of that and we'll try and get as much drilling as we can before we need to put miners' hats on. Um, so we're going to shoot the ball today. Uh, the clinic's about you, but obviously we need to give these uh, young athletes uh, a workout too because we're interrupting their, their weekly session. Shooting um, should be a passion for every coach. It's the single most important skill in basketball. People will argue all the time about that and, and you'll have those guys that give themselves the mantle of a defensive coach and, and, and that's fine. Um, the reality remains the team that puts the ball in the basket more often than the other team wins. And, and this is an absolutely crucial skill for every single player to have, to develop, to refine, and try and get better all the time. Um, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, there was players at the elite level that couldn't shoot or didn't shoot and played significant roles for their teams. That doesn't happen anymore. Um, you know, the game's got to a stage now where those people just don't get defended. Doesn't mean everyone takes 25 shots a game, but we as coaches have to make sure that they've got the tools to shoot consistently, uh, shoot accurately, be their own coach, um, and, and self-correct during the course of, of practices in a game. So we're going to go through some, some different drills. We're going to teach it in three phases. Uh, I believe with, with shooting it's really important that you teach through technique or form drills early. The next phase is your repetition and your volume shooting. That's getting a lot of shots in the sky. Uh, and the last one is situational. It's no good them having great form and being able to stand and, and make thousands and thousands of shots if they can't move, if they can't execute a simple uh, movement pattern that happens in a game to get that shot off. So we're going to teach it in three phases. The first one's form. Um, hopefully we'll get through this and then we'll have some lights and, and get to the next thing. But the first one's form. And this is a, a major problem. Uh, most coaches do form or technique shooting at some time in practice. Um, if you don't, you know, you, you should be. People always tell me I don't have time. If you don't have time to teach and develop and refine shooting, you don't have time to win, which is completely fine. All right? You know, because no one's interested in winning. There's not one coach here that cares about wins or losses, I'm, I'm sure. Is that right? All right, so you've got to invest that, that time. But form shooting doesn't have to be standing around. It doesn't have to be low intensity. It doesn't have to be boring, right? In fact, you've got to make sure you engage them. We started, we started um, in the last program I was involved with charting form shooting. We got the players to count makes and takes. Over the first week, the average, make, average shooting percentage in form shooting drills was 40%. 
and they weren't bad players. Why was it 40%? They weren't engaged, they were only doing the drill because coach said do it, and they didn't place any value on the shot. One thing I would encourage you to do in your drills and in your practices, I, I, I'd have a certain element of accountability and you build accountability by collection of data. You know, I want players to, to count makes and takes. You know, Ben Madgen, who was a terrific player with, with the Sydney Kings, you know, he was really selfish about his development and that's not a criticism, it's a compliment. You know, if he didn't shoot 80%, 90%, in form drills, he was mad and he'd know. You could say to him at any part of a drill, what are you shooting, Madge? You'd say, oh, I'm 15 of 17. I missed there and there. Now, some people go, well, that's selfish. Yeah, it is. It's selfish about wanting to be the best shooter he possibly can be, and that's the best sort of selfish that you can get. So we're gonna go through a, a, a series that, that we borrowed from the Russians. It's called uh, Kazan Form Shooting and it's a build up, uh, a series of build up drills and, and hopefully you can get some things off that. I'll talk to them, get them going, then I'll come back and talk to you. Girls, just come down here. We're gonna use all four baskets. So this is the series that we're going to go through. This is the series that we're going to go through. So you're gonna have four groups at each basket. And, and all I want you to do, someone just come here, Binta, just come over here, or, quick. All right, all I, want you, all I want Binta to do is just flip the ball up and get it to the ready position. One of the biggest problems with shooters is we don't get a wrist tilt. Or when I played, we used to call it a wrist cop. Too many players start with their hand above the ball. Now, if you think about that, that doesn't make any sense. So the first thing we've got to impact when we impact our form shooting is getting that wrist tilt. So it's not this, all I want is flip it and bring it there, all right? Once you do that, all I want you to do is we're going to lift, lock, and leave. Very important, particularly with young female athletes, they lift into their shot. They start the shot looking over the ball, they lift so they're looking under the ball, lift, lock, lock out their elbows, so now their elbows above their ears, and leave. Make sure we've got that follow through. So that's the first one we're going to do. Just do that, just face the basket, just flip it and shoot it, yep. All right, now in form, even if we use the backboard, we want all shots, all net, all the time. Even if you use the backboard, that's fine, but all shots, all net, all the time, all right? The next one we're going to do is just straight line spin out. You're just gonna spin it and get into your shot. So you just add a little bit of movement, go. High and soft, here we go. The next one we're going to do, and girls, you should be, because you're gonna go and do this, all right? Everyone's gonna hold their phones up so you can see, is we're gonna introduce some pivots. So I'm gonna have my anchor foot down, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna have my left foot down, my right foot, my right leg's bent, I'm going to pivot and lift. Pivot and lift, pivot and shoot. Just show us that. All right. The other thing in form shooting that I wanna practice a lot is the, is the shot fake. So as I pivot, lift. Pivot, lift. The shot fake is one of the most underrated fundamentals in our sport. The best shooters in basketball have the best shot fakes. Makes sense, doesn't it? So we need to practice in, in what we're doing. All right, so just one more time and, and make sure you get a good shot fake every time. Pivot, lift, good, that's it. Pivot, lift, pivot, lift, good. The next one is pound, pound, gather, lift. So you're gonna dribble it with your left hand, pound, pound, gather it, lift into your shot. Go. All right, the next one's gonna be right hand. Pound, pound, gather, lift. All right, so go to your baskets, go through that series, girls, let's go while I talk to the coaches. So there's, there's five or six different elements there, and quite realistically, at the start of practice, 
each of those elements one minute. They don't get bored, but they get volume. I would have them, and we're not going to do it for the sake of the drill now, I would have them collect makes and takes and I would write it down. You'd be, you see Binta there and it's not to embarrass her, she's a really skilled player. I think she missed three out of the five shots she took. Again, value. If they don't put a value on this, it won't have any value for them. One of the most powerful aspects in learning is success. What we want to do is we want shooters to see the ball going through the net consistently. All right, because that reinforces the learning, it reinforces the success. All right, so we want them in this six minutes to be shooting 32 of 36. They're going to miss a couple, but we certainly don't want them shooting 16 of 36 because they're not focused and they're not moving into that. This is form. When we think of form, we think of someone standing here and there's nothing wrong with that. But how long can you keep the athletes engaged in that? Not very long. Most things in our sport, it's a dynamic environment, happen through movement or from movement. So why would we practice in a static environment very much? Right? Hold up. Hold up, who's, who's counting makes and misses? Now I didn't ask you, what's your makes and misses? Eight of 11. Eight of 11's pretty good. Anyone else? Nine of 12, that's pretty good. Who didn't count? All right, so you gotta make sure that you're selfish with that development. How, how can you judge how well you're shooting the ball if you don't put some data around it? All right, now you should be into your pivot stage now. All right, make sure. But girls, you see this all the time in the NBL, and it never ceases to amaze me. Professional athletes making $120,000 a year and they step out of bounds two times a game on the catch. It's because they load up like this, catch, oh. We don't load like that. We never play the game and we've got, we've got our strength and conditioning com, uh, consultant here, Rob, and he would tell you, you don't have any power the wider your stance gets. If I've got this length or this width, I haven't got balance or power. If I'm here, I have. It's the same with a step in. I want that foot back, but that's the movement, not this. It's too gross a movement and there's too many things that can go wrong, right? So make sure you've got bent legs, all right? Step and lift, step and lift, step and shoot. All right, all shots, all net, all the time, go. And with coaching, we always want to get more practice out of practice. We always want to get more drill out of the drill. If I came here and, and, and did pivoting drills with these kids, they look at me like I've got green hair. What are we doing? We're doing our form shooting, but we're getting some pivoting. We're getting a shot fake, all right? So we're adding elements, but we're still focusing on the single most important aspect, and that's their ability to shoot the ball consistently. All right, hold the balls. Pretty good, girls. And, and thank you for the way you're going about it. I know it's, it's trying circumstances, so you should be congratulated. I would say nearly all of you shoot the ball too flat. You don't have enough arc, all right? Your trajectory is this when it should be this, all right? So what I'd encourage you to do is exaggerate now as you shoot the arc. The ball must go up to go in. We shoot the ball high and soft. Right now you're shooting the ball at the basket rather than in the basket. The ball should go up four and a half to five and a half meters high. The great Christy Harrower, our greatest ever point guard, five and a half, six meter on her, on the trajectory of her shot. All right, had to at 167 centimeters. 
um, had to do that. But if we shoot with arc, we give ourselves more, more of a target. So now once you go into your pound series, so hard dribble, and then make sure on the gather, and we talk to the kids a lot about the gather, really important, that particularly off the dribble, the gather is a catch. You would have heard for many times that a dribble is actually just a pass to yourself. One of the great things about Steph Curry is his ability to get from here to there. He's the best there's ever been. And his ability to get from dribble to release. All right? So girls, what I want you to do, pound, pound, make sure as you gather it from your left hand, you bring it across over your right thigh, and then it's that lift. Gather, lift, lock, leave, high and soft. Let's go. Incorporating dribbling into your form drills is absolutely crucial. All right, so often when we do our technique and our form, everything's off stationary and we never incorporate dribble. Well, you know, in junior basketball, about a third of all jump shots come off the dribble. All right, and I don't mean drive and kick, I mean someone catch it and dribble it. If we ask kids to walk in and take any shot they wanted, Yes, it'd be a three-point shot, but I bet you it'd include a dribble. This is what they, that's what they do. So we need to make sure that we're blending that into our, into our shooting drills as much as we can. Okay, hold up. Girls, just come across here, this basket, so you can see. We'll go three groups at, three groups at each basket. So, just come here for me, please. If I'm not following the notes, there's two reasons. I never do. All right, that's the first one. Secondly, I can't read it. So if I lose my thing, you go, what drill is he doing now? Just get the video, okay? So now, again, still form, and I, I wanna make sure early in the practice, in the first, the first 15 minutes of practice, I wanna make sure every athlete's got a basketball because we're gonna handle it, we're gonna pass it, and we're gonna do our form shooting. I'd really encourage you to do it. Now I understand you can't have a bag of 10, 12 basketballs, but they can bring a basketball. And it's absolutely crucial. The first 15 minutes of your practice, if you can have a high percentage of that with everyone with the ball, you're gonna get a lot of skill development, right? And you, then you're gonna be able to move on to all that fun stuff that coaches like to do, you know, the strategy and, and sets and you know all concepts. So if, you, if you're in a hurry to get there, and I get it, make sure you get maximum value here with everyone with the ball. So what I want you to do now, Charlotte, is this. You're gonna spin the ball out, all right? And you're right-handed, so you're gonna spin the ball out, you're gonna step in left, right, and you're gonna shot fake. Just do that for me. Spin it out, shot fake. Now, I want you to turn and spin it back out to the three-point line, and same thing, left, right, shot fake. No, sorry, pivot all the way around and face the basket, right? And on the last one, you're going to shoot it. So spin it out, and you're gonna shoot it, all right? So let's see that in, the, in its uh, entirety. Spin it out, shot fake, lift, good. Spin it out, all the way around on the pivot. No, no, yeah, good. So turn and face, and go, all right? Again, we want more practice out of practice, more drill out of the drill. So we're getting some pivoting, we're getting some stride stopping, we're getting the all important shot fake, and you can't teach shooting without teaching the shot fake. All right, we're getting a square up, so it's my fault, it's poor instruction. When you spin it back out, mate, what I want you to do, all right, bang, all the way around. All right, let's just see that. All the whole thing, here we go. One, good, spin it, good, good, and lift. All right, girls, let's go, let's go. And again, it's really important, particularly in most of your settings, 
you're going to be time poor. You're going to be, you're only going to have two practices a week and you're going to be time poor. So you don't have enough time to teach things in isolation. So while this is form shooting, it's also pivoting, it's also footwork, and again, I can't stress enough the importance of, of drilling the shot fake until it becomes the new normal. High and soft, let's go. Now, as you'll see, because I've told them that this is form shooting, how's their intensity? It's not great. And it's not a criticism, but they're doing what I think they, that, that they want me, that I want them to do. Form shooting doesn't have to be like it's an over 55s comp. So yes, we want to make sure we've got technique, but I'm going to stop them now, and now I want some speed to it. You can still drill form, you can still impact technique at speed. Hold up girls, hold the balls. Really good job, stay where you are. Excellent job. Now, couple things, I want you to do it quicker. All right, the game's getting faster all the time, so we need to practice at, at, a, at a better rate all the time. Couple things, very rarely do we get to move and go one, two. All right, as you spin it out, bang. The ball's in the air, you're in the air. You're quick to the ball, all right? You're not stepping through the catch, you're skipping through the catch. All right, the great Sandy Brondello, four-time Olympian, arguably our greatest ever basketball Olympian. That, you know, she talks about short contact on footwork. She doesn't want to hear this. All right, and if you, if you watched her play, for those that are old enough to watch, you know, it's like she was on air. You know, it wasn't bang, bang. You know, everything was quick. You could hear that, it bang. And that's what we want, girls. So as you skip into it, be really light on your feet, and on that last one, explode up into your shot. Let's go, a little bit quicker now. Let's go, come on, come on, come on. Good. Quicker, good. Now, one of the problems, if you see here, and we won't address it with the kids right now, is how many of them thrust and try and get power from their hips. All right, if you watch them shoot, as they come, instead of loading and lifting, they load and thrust. See that? Right, the hips come forward. Now I know Rob's working really hard with their physiology to make sure that they've got the functional movement patterns to do things properly, but it's such a common error with young athletes. So as I lift into my shot, this is my power source, this is my power source. I've got a bigger power source than most, admittedly. All right, but as I lift into my shot, that's where I come. If you watch some of these young ladies from here, it's, these come forward, so it's bang. So the shoulders go back, the head goes back. If you're looking at the misses, without even looking, I'd say 80% of misses are either short or flat. Why? As I lift and thrust my hips forward, what happens to my arm? Okay, so it's very important they stay in that cylinder, drive from here and drive from their abdominals there. So we're up into our shot. Okay, hold up. Just stay where you are, girls. Now, I, I like to do the spin out because you can get a lot of, a lot of um, repetitions up. We're not relying on passes the whole time. We'll get to obviously catching off the pass because one of the issues with the spin out is it's a perfect pass to ourselves every time. And obviously in a game, it's here, here, wherever else. The other problem with the spin out is, is this. Can I have that ball for a minute, please, mate? 
What do we tend to do? I said spin the ball out. What are they actually doing? Spinning it up. So it bites and comes back up to them. What they need to do is spin it out and arrive at the ball, because that's how basketball works. We arrive at the ball, the ball doesn't come to us. Very, really, really important. So now, real challenging drill, guys, you're gonna spin it out, but it's not gonna bounce. So start with your heels inside the three, and you're gonna spin it out and get to it and shoot it. Once you get some rhythm, try and spin it out even further. Not this. I can do that. You guys are elite athletes. Spin it out, go get it, and then we're up. Spin it out, go to the catch, lift into your shot. All right, let's go. Now, if you watch here, they'll struggle. Some will travel. It's difficult. It's an overload drill, all right? So it's really important that we get it done. Good, now it's just straight line, that's it, good. Just straight line, and ca just catch and shoot. All right, hold up. So I'm here, face me, face me. All right, inside. Now, Another variation of this. Now, I'm not suggesting you would do all these in, in one practice, but it's really important. We all want a suite of drills, don't we? All right, so you got six minutes to get your form done, maybe eight minutes. One thing I, I was remiss in not saying at the start of, of the session, because I was cognizant of the light, 20% of total practice time should be devoted to shooting, at minimum. Every practice plan you write should evolve with 20% of total practice time. It should become like brushing your teeth. When you do, you just know, you just do it. It just happens. If you're coaching under 14s, under 12s, 30 to 40% of total practice time should be on shooting. All right, it's that important. So what you want is a suite of drills that you can keep it fresh, keep it interesting, but make sure you're boring in the most important element of, of the game and that's shooting and shooting technique and footwork. So what I want you to do now, mate, is you're gonna throw the ball over your left shoulder, right? You're gonna get to the ball quickly, step in left, right, and shoot it. Go, go. All right, not bad. All right, now, come back. Test yourself. That was too safe, test yourself. Go get it, go get it. Not bad. Now last one, flip it out there and go and ch I want you to try and cover a meter and a half. Go. Good girl. Let's go girls, let's get it done. Now, one of the things that we've consistently been saying recently in our coach development is, is you've got to be willing to be comfortable with the mess. Right now, I, the reason I'm looking at you right now because I don't want to look at them. Because I know there's travels, I know it's a disaster, I know it's a mess. But what happens in games consistently? Mess. So we as coaches have to be comfortable with the mess and we have to give them the tools to extricate from the mess and find solutions. You see Kitty did it the first time, very safe. The second time, a little bit safer. The third time, she tested herself, and that's fine. Do we expect it to be perfect? No, all right? And that's what I'm saying with form. If form's not mentally stimulating, if there's not a certain element of physical challenge, it's not going to have value. Yes, we want that important element of success, i.e. the ball going through the net, but how much are we really impacting their ability to shoot by standing here underneath the basket and doing that? There's certainly an element that we need to do that, especially with younger players as we're trying to break it down, but for these guys, it's about giving them the proper knowledge and asking them to repeat the proper knowledge time and time again.
Okay. Now, hold the balls. Last one. Now, along those same lines, girls, and great job. All right. Now I want you to do everything on an angle. So start anywhere you want on the, on the court. And now we've been doing a lot of left-right step-ins, okay? But obviously, the game's not played in straight lines. It's played in a series of curves and, and a series of angles. So we need to make sure we impact that. So now what I want you to do, start with your heels on the three-point line facing the basket. Spin it out on an angle. Now I might spin it on this angle and I'm left right. The next one, I might spin it on this one where I'm right left and making sure that I've got that foot pattern and, and my balance. All right, again, spin it out, not up, but no bounce. You gotta get quick through the ball. JJ Reddick, quick through the ball. Go. and soft let it fly girls high and soft the ball must go up to go in all right hold up hold up now what I want you to do is every time you shoot it as you release it you're going to say make or miss so as you step through the ball, shoot it, you know when it's coming out of your hands, or you should know if it's, if it's a make or a miss. And, but we want to get you to reinforce that. So as soon as you shoot it, just as make or miss, you're going to nominate what it's doing. Now, you're not going to guess because you're going to know. As soon as that thing's left that last finger on my hand, I know whether it's going in. All right, so we're going to, everyone's going to yell make or miss. The other thing in your drilling coaches is uh, I was speaking to a colleague of mine today and he, he made a great point. In drills, counting is a discipline. It's a discipline that we can instill in our players and it can help the quality of their development. So I'm going to make sure that their counting makes and misses and if we ask them the first one to seven that everyone knows what score they are. It's amazing how often when you ask athletes to count, they simply don't. Not because they're defiant, but they forget, they don't value it. So it's a great point. Counting is a discipline and it's something that we can just embed in every drill that we do. So now, spin it out. You're gonna nominate, make or miss, but you're also then gonna count out your scores. It's the first shooter to three made baskets. Go, 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 go. The other element, the other reason that we're doing this, coaches, is to add some variables. And that's another, another aspect of form shooting. We never add variables. So now we've added angles. We've added foot pattern. They've got to make or miss, so they've got to do that, and they've got to count. If we were to chart from the last drill to this drill, the percentage would go bang. Why? It's more difficult to do two or three things at once than, than one. And our game is a game of what's next. So it's crucial that we, that we drive that in there. Three, good job. All right, this basket. Good job. Who got three? Who won? Meg. All right, great job. And what, you know, what that shows is post players, are, uh, you should get more shots because they're the best shooters on the team. So good job, Meg. Um, right, now we're gonna move into some repetition drills and these are the team drills. Um, this is where we get volume. This is where, um, to use a, use a phrase from, from my great friend and mentor, Rex Nottage, our job as, as coaches is to provide proper knowledge, PPK. Their job as athletes is to practice proper knowledge, PPK. So this is where they practice proper knowledge. When we're doing the form, we will be getting around, that's where we would be providing that proper knowledge. So we, we call this rup shooting. Gang, I think we'll just do it um, at, at, on one court. 
So what I need, I set it up here and you guys just watch. I need a group here, we need four groups. One here at the seam and one here, just uh, I guess we call this elevated short corner, right? Basketball's there, move over to the seam, same there. So we're gonna have two basketballs there, all right? You don't need a ball, okay? So what's going to happen is we're gonna work on our passing but our shot mechanics. So again, I'm, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna have my anchor foot down. That's my left foot. I'm gonna have my anchor foot down. That's what balances me. On this side, I'm gonna have bent back leg. I'm gonna show hungry hands. I'm gonna show a hungry hand. So straight away, that's a form of communication too. She sees my hungry hands and she's just gotta throw it in here. This side, we have got what we call open hips. Open hips to the ball, bang, as she does it, I step through the catch and I'm into my shot. All right, so let's just show that. Sit down, make sure that you don't have that foot too far back. This is our NBL friends. Oh, boop, out of bounds, oh, my bad. Yeah, really, all right. So make sure they're playing compact, sitting down, showing, showing hands. Now, your job is to be an outstanding teammate. So your job is to get in a stance, engage your core, and throw that pass right into those hungry hands so she's only got to worry about one thing, go. Good, perfect. Now on the other side, Charlotte's right, right handed as well. She's still going to do the same foot pattern. She's gonna have her anchor foot down, so her left foot down, her right foot back. But now she's gotta twist her torso to show hungry hands. So rather than stand here, because that's gonna get deflection, what I've gotta do is get my chest to the receiver. I don't wanna do it by doing this, because that's gonna throw out my foot pattern and makes me less efficient. So I sit down, twist my torso, show my hungry hands, step through the catch. All right, let's just see that. Good, all right. It's always great when you pick two demonstrators and they both make their, their first shot. Now, so that's what we've got, girls. So we're gonna get, normally we would go for eight minutes on this drill, a minute either side, there's two, all right. Then we would go, uh, so we'd go two minutes either side, there's four, and then we'd change to this. So now, D, D sorry, mate. Sorry. D's got the ball. You just move in a little bit, right? You just move back a little bit. No, not right at the elbow, a bit back. So same thing. So on this side, your left foot's down. So what are you doing on this side? What do we call it over there? Torso twist, good. And the reason I ask her that is they need to learn the detail. They need to learn your language. Because to be an elite player, or to be just a very good player, you need to be a great learner. So that's part of it too, so excellent job. So you got a torso twist, sit down, load up, hungry hands, good pass D, don't let me down. Great job, all right, ball there. Now Sarah, right, I don't know if you know, but this is going to Facebook Live and we've got 16,000 coaches around Australia watching, all right? So on this side, Sarah's got open hips, she's gonna step through and knock it down, go. Foul. Let's go. Let's go. Now, this is, people ask me, what's your favorite shooting drill? And this is what I tell them and they look at me like, really, we brought you all the way up from Canberra to show us this? But it's got passing, it's got footwork and it's got lots of shots. In eight minutes, in eight minutes, we would count makes and takes. Every athlete, we would have an expectation, takes 60 to 70 shots. 60 to 70 shots. So right here, this drill, we're gonna get, you know, thousands of shots up and making sure we've got that. Now, the passing's the big one. People say, you know, the San Antonio Spurs, for example, are a great shooting team, and they are. But it's easy for them to be a great shooting team, you know why? 
They're the single best passing team that basketball may have ever seen. So when Pat Mills gets open in the corner and he loads up beautifully, Tony Parker throws the ball there. Not there, not there, not there, right there. And now, boom. All right, so we've got to impact again. We need to get more drill out of the drill, more practice out of practice. All right, swap sides, quick, swap sides if you haven't already. Go, go. Hold the balls, hold the balls. Great job. I can hear, I can hear voices. All right, lots, stay where you are. I can hear voices. I'm seeing the ball going through the net. You're into it. And you know, I just told the coaches, I love this shooting drill. And, and thank goodness you guys made me look good because you're into it. There's activity. All of a sudden it is a great drill. And it's a great drill not because of me. It's a great drill because of them. Because in the end, when you're in this volume or repetition space, that's what you're trying to achieve. High volume, high repetition. So, you know, if you've got more complex drills and you see coaches and it's like Pythagoras' theorem, you know, they've got cut here, go here, run here, go to this cone, get great. If, if that's your thing, great. But how many shots you're getting up? I want to know how many we're getting up. I know in eight minutes in the rup shooting, every single player on my team gets up 60. It's a pretty good start. You know, and I used to do some of those trigonometry lessons, shooting drills, and we'd get up 15. We don't have time to do that. So we've got to make sure we get volume. Now, girls, what we'll, we'll, we'll fast track things. So now the pass is down here, shooters here. But girls, you've done a great job. Now, as you're loaded, as the ball comes, as the ball's in the air, you're in the air. So it's as the ball comes, boom, and you're stepping in. You're still swinging that leg forward, all right? But as it comes, boom, and you're into your shot. Okay, just like you would in a game. And get it off quick. Now, first person to four swishes. Swishes. All shots, all net, all the time. Go. Get him up, get him up, get him up. I'm blaming the light. Okay, girls, this basket, quickly. Let's go. Stay where you are, gang. Same setup. Now, hey, um, we're moving at warp speed, girls, because of the light issue. Uh, do you guys need a drink? No, good. All right. Um, <laughs> So from that, and you, you want to be able to move quickly from one drill to the other. Um, obviously, we're stopping and starting because this is about you, but one thing that athletes don't like is a lot of stop-start, and, and the game is a very fluid and dynamic game, so our practices have to be that way too. So I'd really encourage you to develop um, shoot, uh, skill and drill series rather than, than just drills. So the rup, you've got the shooting there from the extended short corner, you've got from the elbow. So you just go into that, it's an eight minute thing, but there's different shots, there's four two minute components. The next one is two, three, and four pass shooting. And improving passing is one of the most challenging things for any coach, particularly a junior coach. We pass the ball really pretty poorly as a rule, all right? Because if I say to them, okay, we're gonna, imagine if I said, or Shannon and Sean said, Lonigan's coming up, he's gonna run a 90 minute passing clinic. 
oh, where do I sign? It's not happening, all right? We can hear crickets in here. So we've got to be a bit sneaky. We want them to be better passers, yet we never drill it. So we've got to, we're going to add a little bit of an element here. So I just want you to start about here. Ball's here. All right, so you're loaded just like you were before, Charlotte. Good. Now, what you're going to do is a firm, firm pass, all right, and sh so swing that leg through on the catch shot fake. As that happens, you're dropping down into your stance, right? Pivot and throw it back, right? Shoot it. Okay. Now, what you've got to do after you pass is quickly get organized into that stance. So you're going to torso twist here, your open hips. Go. So we've got that, two pass rup, all right? Now three pass rup, so the ball starts here, go, there's one, there's two, there's three. Okay, and again, what we want is firm, flat passes and, and we're, we're getting a level of sneakiness in because in our drill where we're taking 60 shots, now we're making 240 passes which is even better. Now, four pass rub, we want to add an element of, of movement. All right, so ball starts here. So we've got one, lift, good, two, three. Now four, right, you're going to shot, you're going to shot fake, penetrate. You're going to lift and replace her, jump stop, kick, shoot. Let's, let's see that, let's see that. Here we go. One, two, three, four, good. Let's go straight to that one, girls. Let's get moving here now. And again, they, they get, they've probably practiced their shot fake more in the last 45 minutes here in the dark than they have in the last 45 training sessions. And that's not a criticism of their coaches, it's just the reality of it. But if you watch the great, great shooters, they are all got a great shot fake. Why? They're absolutely desperate to get their shot off. Now, it's funny, one of the guys that I use a lot in my examples is JJ Reddick, and, and Paul will tell you, I'm a North Carolina guy, and I use a Duke guy for my examples, but he's the best shooter I've, I think I've ever seen technically. He's also got the single best shot fake in basketball. He's not a great athlete, he's not super quick, but he gets his shot off whenever he wants because he's got a really believable shot fake. People bite at the shot fake and it gives him an opportunity. So it's a great opportunity to sneakily get that in and develop a really important skill. <coughs> No, I got it, mate. Yeah, yeah, I got it. No, oh yeah, thanks. Beautiful. All right, let's go. Girls, why don't, why don't you walk quickly and get a drink and then come back here? You're doing an unbelievable job. We really, really appreciate what you're doing here. Hey, quietly. Hey, quietly. All right, so now we're going to move on to some situational uh, shooting. And it's just as important. There's obviously the, the form and the technique is the single most important element that you can do because if, if you're practicing poor form, you're defeating the purpose. But in terms of volume shooting, and situational shooting, I would do about the same time frame in my practices. Why? Very rarely, very rarely do you catch the ball stationary. Even if you do, and again, I, I mentioned Pat Mills. Pat Mills often catches the ball stationary. What people don't realize is how much work he's put in to get to a situation where he can catch it stationary. 
he's been in a flat sprint for 80 feet so he can arrive quicker than anyone else, sit down and wait for Tony or Manu to slap that in his hands. Right, Ryan Brockoff, probably technically the best shooter we have in our country at the moment. Right, he's playing in Russia and will be, a, will be an NBA player. Again, not a great athlete, but he works so hard that he does get himself some stationary looks. All right, but usually there's a lot of movement involved to get to a situation where you can shoot the ball. So we need to make sure that, that we incorporate that in our practice. So in your notes, uh, we've got a drill called 2v1 two, two decision shooting. We're gonna skip to the second element of that. The 2v1 decision shooting, we're not gonna have the young ladies do, but I will show you. Um, so it doesn't matter who's there, you're there. Uh, D, you're here, and just jump here for me. Sorry, your name is? Izzy. Come here, mate. Quick. Izzy's got the ball. You guys don't need a ball. All right, so you're just half a step back, D. All right. Half, just bring it. So you're about, yeah, about equal distance. Now, you're in the charge halo. You're gonna throw the ball out as in, you can throw it to either or, right? And then you're gonna close out and try and contest it. All you can do, Sarah and D, is catch and shoot or catch and pass. You can't dribble, you can't fake, you can't do anything. You can catch and shoot and catch and pass. You're trying to get there and contest shots, all right? Go. So that would be the first element of it, all right? First element, and what we're doing here is encourage them not to take contested shots. One of the most uh, popular things in, in drilling shooting and teaching shooting in the last couple of years has been this, a lot of contested shooting drills, and they're great drills. Why are we teaching people to take contested shots? That's always been my thought, all right? Now, the people that have been doing it are a lot smarter than I am but I figure you tend to make more open shots than contested shots. So here, what we want is we want Sarah on the catch to be quick enough and skilled enough to shoot it. But as soon as she realizes it's a contested shot, she's got to make the extra, all right? So now we're starting to build up our, our split kick extra concepts as well as, as well as shooting. Then what we would do is, uh, Charlotte, just jump on that yellow line. Yeah, about there. Give me another defender. Jess, jump in, or someone, Jess, jump in, please. So this is the drill we're going to do, all right, behind Izzy. So Izzy, you're gonna throw it out. The only person you can't throw it to is you gotta throw it there or there. Same rules apply, girls, all right? You can only catch and shoot or catch and pass. You can't dribble, all right? And the most passes you can make before a shot are two. All right, so if Izzy throws it to Sarah, close out, you're gonna anticipate, all right? If it gets there, you gotta be quick, all right? It gets there, now that's the open shot, all right? You're still trying to contest it, but two people shouldn't be out of guard three people, all right? So let's see that, let's see that. Now you guys have to be ready to catch and shoot or catch and pass, go. Good, all right, now. The pass from Sarah to D, D, where did you have to catch it? Problem. It stopped, it, it denied D an opportunity to shoot the ball. Now that's being super critical and it's not being critical of, of Sarah, but again, you can't shoot it if you don't, if you can't pass it. All right, so this is as much about passing as it is, is about shooting. All right, everything's can I load and shoot? Can I load and pass? Can I load and shoot? Can I load and pass? There's only two things that they can do. Let's go to the baskets, go straight into this, girls. Let's keep moving here, doing a great job. No, no, three, straight to three on two, gang. Straight to three on two. The other thing is, and, and obviously it's, we've got some challenges with the light, but I show them and then I say go, and that's by design. Now one, I, I need to focus on you, but I, I want this to happen. F figure it out. Remember we spoke, be comfortable with the mess. The three worst words in all of coaching. 
Stop, stop, stop. They're the three worst words in all of them. Stop, stop, stop. Set it up again. Now make it perfect. Now continue. Because that happens in a game all the time, doesn't it? Right? So be comfortable with the mess. Now right now, this is annoying me because how slow it's going, but rather than me use those three terrible words, I'm going to ignore it for a bit and hope there's some leadership and hope that they can bring it together. Come on, let's go. Quick, 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 quick. Quick, move it, move it. Good, good girl. Good job. Let's go. Shan, we got cones or uh, chairs or, or something. We'd probably just go three drink bottles, Shan. Drink bottles would be okay, probably. All right, hold up. Now, stay where you are. Again, we want to get more drill out of the drill and we want to add, all right? So when we, I should have said this early, right? When we drill and teach shooting, it doesn't always have to be in isolation. You know, one thing that I always incorporate is passing as much as we can because we pass it so badly. But you've got to also blend in the concepts of the game because you, you don't coach in an environment where you practice every day. You have two sessions a week and in those sessions you've got to cover everything from inbounds plays to zone defense to zone offense, press attack, blah, blah, blah. All right? I've got the best job in the world. I just teach skill and concept and no one judges me because I don't win or lose any games. All right? It's the world's biggest con. It's fantastic. All right? But you guys need to blend in some concepts. So how we're going to do that is this. Same setup, but now... Charlotte, you're outside the three. All right? So, you, same setup. What will happen, just walk through it, throw it out, all right? Make an extra. Now, make an extra. Now, Charlotte, you can't shoot it. You must drive. You must drive. All right? Penetrate. You're trying to guard her. Now, it's three, it's three on two, but really it's three on one and two on one here because she's engaged. So you would sprint and get to that dead corner. You would feel behind. And Shannon, I'm sorry if I'm going against your principles in terms of where you want people to go. I just want people to get open. I think we spend so much time in where people go and where they don't go. Just get open and make good decisions, all right? So let's go, let's do that, girls. So remember, Charlotte, you have to drive. Play, here we go, play. Good, move, move, good decisions, good. Good job. Foul, all right? And then we would go, we'd go from there. It's still a shooting drill, because what we would say, that on that, on that kick out, it has to be a shot. It has to be a shot. And one of the biggest problems that the coaches face when they enter into the dribble drive phase, and it's really good stuff, is all the player hears is dribble. All right, and, and they just keep putting it on the deck. So in that drill, I would make sure they have to shoot it. Now let's go one more, same thing. Now the, on the kick out, you've got to re-penetrate and the next pass has got to be a shot. Understand? So when Charlotte kicks it to whoever, you can't shoot it. You've got a shot fake, re-penetrate and then get a jumper for someone else. Go. Go Charlotte, go, go. Move, move, good. Knock it. Oh, NBL player stepped out of bounds. <laughs> All right. Let's do that, girls. Let's go that for a couple of minutes. Oh, uh, yeah, well, the next drill I will. Yeah. Let me just sit in Yeah, my thanks. So I need three at every basket. Three at every basket. Yeah. Now, 
The biggest problem here right now is we've added a lot of variables. If we were tracking shot percentage here, whoosh, right? But that's not a bad thing because these are the shots they're going to have to take in games. Remember, we're in a situational phase right here. We're trying to get that done. Good. Hard luck. Good look. Hard luck. Good, good pivot. Good, knock it. Hard luck. All right, girls, bring it over. All right, great job, girls. Um, as I was saying, the, the, they've shot the ball really well. You know, haven't they? You know, from just in general terms, they've, they've shot the ball nicely, and and most of them have got really clean, efficient shooting styles. You know, there's not a lot of moving bits. It's, it's pretty sound, all right. And so the, the you know the coaches, you guys, have done a great job because that doesn't happen overnight. So, but you saw when we added some variables and we added some different components, the shooting percentage just plummets. All right, at the recent under 20s. Uh, which was you know, a great tournament. And I thought the girls' tournament was, was probably the best it's been in a couple of years in terms of parity and, and organisation and coaching and a whole lot of things. It was, you know, it was really good. But the average shooting percentage for teams was 30 or 31, I think 32. The average three-point percentage was 26. So you can see the challenges that we face. And they're, they're elite players, very good players, all right? Um, you can see the challenges that we have. So we've got to find ways to teach shooting in these three phases so we can continue to develop it. And that's why I say the situational phase is still important because each of these girls would shoot the ball in drills, all right, with limited variables, well over 60%. And if they shot the ball 60% in games, they'd be in the WNBA. But it's every time you add a variable, add movement, add decisions, and that's probably the biggest variable of all is decisions, it impacts that. So what do we do? We've got to teach them to make decisions. We've got to expose them to a more decision-making processes and it'll become more natural from there. All right, so even that drill, people go, that's not really a shooting drill. Yes, it is. Really, there's very few basketball drills that aren't a shooting drill. You know, 98% of basketball drills end with what? They certainly don't end with a box out. They, <laughs> they end with a shot. It'd be great if they ended, ended with a box out, all right? Someone's negative, they said turnover. Come on, not in, not in New South Wales, all right? Hello. <laughs> now. Uh, yeah, well, Nick. I'll need that at all three baskets, mate. All right, so let's, let's, uh, you can come over here for me, you can be a demonstrator. So what I need is, is four people out front with a basketball each, spread out. Quick, you're down here. What's your first name again, sorry? Sadie. Sadie, sorry mate, I should know that. You're on the baseline, mate. Now, I've, I've got to come up with a better name for this drill. Move over, move over a little bit, spread out just a little bit. All right, yep. I call this drill JJ, shoot, JJ Curl Shooting. Right, I've really got to come up with a better, better name for it because again, it's named after a Duke guy and it frustrates me. But So what Sadie's going to do is she's going to run three curls and a flare, all right? So the first, she's going to start on the baseline She's gonna step in, then she's gonna curl this water bottle, receive the first pass. No, here, curl the first one. So just curl this one and catch and shoot about the black line, all right? Bang. Now Sarah can get the rebound in this situation. Sadie, you're gonna run back to the there, to the baseline, then you're gonna curl the second one, receive the ball, catch and shoot. 
you get your rebound. Baseline, curl the top one, catch and shoot. Now, on the third one, you're gonna run to the charge halo, you're gonna dribble lift, and you're going to run, flare, sit, and shoot. All right? So you're gonna run a, a straight flare cut off that. All right, and everything's gonna be at pace. All right, so let's, let's see that, let's see that. Go, curl, good. Move, go, move, move. Good, let's go, move. Good. All right, halo, lift, Charlie, good, flare. Knock it down. All right, now. And then the next person would go. So as that's happened, everyone's moving across. So who was the first passer? So Sarah would be the next shooter and we're going, going from there. For those guys that, that work individually or in small groups, the other way you can do it, it's a great workout drill and it's certainly a workout, is you do it just with one passer. You guys step out. We won't do it with one passer when you go to the basket. Just come up a bit higher. See, you're going to get your own rebound every time. Go. Good. Rebound. Throw it and then curl. Throw it then curl. Go. Next one. Good. Get your rebound. Good. Good girl. Go. 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 Good. Get it out. Quick, run your flare out here. Good, foot down, good, knock it. Good shot prep, good girl. Excellent, outstanding. All right, now, you can do that three minutes. So Sarah would be in for three minutes. You think about that's a burn, that probably just took her about 14 seconds. So it's, it's a real challenge and you would count makes and takes, but it's a great conditioning drill and it's a great individual, individual footwork and fundamental drill. Let's get to the baskets and work that. All right, coaches have got some stuff out. Here we go, come on, move, move, let's go. Now, it's a new drill, so look at the speed. That, you know, it, they're not getting the value that they need in a situation because they're being compliant and they're being slow, all right? What we need to do, and we're not going to talk to them a lot about it now, because they're here helping you. So uh, it's not about coaching them, but I want the person to run four international level cuts. I want them to cut at speed and execute footwork at speed and get into the lift, lock and leave at speed. Right now, it's all very pedestrian. The other thing that I, I would encourage you to do is have a manager or an assistant coach or a parent at practice chart fumbles. If you look out here, how many fumbles, how many times they don't catch the ball cleanly. Now part of that's the passing, but part of it is just lack of attention to detail on catching. If we were to chart fumbles in this session, hour and a half with 25 odd kids, it'd be 60 or 70 fumbles. It, it would be. And that's not a criticism, it's just players don't concentrate on catching the ball cleanly. The best shooters, they make sure that thing comes into their hands perfectly every time. So, you know, and the only way to get that point across to them is to collect some data and say, hey, we just fumbled the ball 50 times in the last seven drills. And they'll go, no, nah. well, we did. There it is. They've got to have that ability to catch the ball cleanly and execute the next thing. Okay, hold the balls. Hold the balls. All right, now. 
Don't get excited. <laughs> So you other girls, I want you to set this up at, at your baskets. Three cut shooting. Whoever's kid that is, can you get him out of the road, please? Um, so we've got we've got three passes. So what I want you to start now, Sarah, over there. So what's going to happen? is you're going to dribble as Sarah makes so come down, Sarah, all right? Then you're going to cut off that, receive the ball, catch and shoot, all right? Get your own rebound, throw it, throw it back. Then you're going to cut through the elevator. So you're going to start here, all right? As that she cuts, you dribble across. You're going to cut through the elevator, get your left foot down, rear into your shot. All right, do that. Dribble, go. Bang. Get the rebound, get it back. Now, you're going to cut the high side of that and before you get to it, you're going to flare and you're going to throw a firm flat pass to her. All right, let's see that at speed. See, at speed. Go. Good. Bang. Get it quick, good. Move hard, good. Get it. Flat. All right, good. Now, we need to get some spacing here. So as she's making that cut, you're coming wider, all right? And then you're throwing that pass. Same with it. You're sprinting, so there's spacing. So you get to here and you kick it back. You're just catching pass, so we've got the extra and it's firm and flat, all right? That was very good, but I need it twice the speed. Twice the speed or we don't get value. Let's roll, let's get it done, come on. Quick, come on. Flat. Good, next, go, 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 move. Good. Good. Go, hard, hard, hard. Good. The reason that we add the dribble component is because we need to teach them how to limit turnovers. So rather than me just throw it to Teddy there, that's gonna be a bad pass. I need to be able to put it on the floor and deliver that. Or I need to be able to stretch it and send it back. All right, very rarely does the passer do this. The reason we have it do here, this like extra, so I've received it, bang. If we've got to add some game components, remember this is a situational phase of, of the drill. All right, hold up. Hold up, now, stay there. Stay to guard uh, Kitty, quick. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to start out of bounds. All right, a bit further. Same drill, and every time, Kitty, you've got to rebound, and so you'll be in a charge circle. Sadie, you've got to run out of bounds, but you're trying to contest every shot. Here's one of those awful contested shooting drills, all right? Um, but the reason we do do it is to encourage speed and get it off. H how can we give any accountability with if we don't add some defense at some stage? All right, so, yes. You have to, yeah, you have to go around the cones. Ready, go, speed, quick, quick, contest it, contest it, go, next, quick, 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 go, get there, contest it, contest it. Good, next. Good, bang, flare it. Good, all right, let's go, let's go. Now you might, it depends on the level of athlete you have, you would say to the defense, you're trying to legitimately contest or you're being drill friendly, coach friendly, however you want to do, do it. 
Then the next element would be, if they haven't got a shot, shot fake, there it is again, penetrate and allow them to shoot layup. So it becomes a one-on-one -on -one contested drill. It becomes a closeout drill. It becomes a containment drill. Again, we want to get more drill out of every drill, more practice out of practice. Girl, good job, good job. Rob, uh, you're in the gym at 7.30. The kids got gym at 7.30? 7.30, okay. Now, sorry mate, all right, now girls, just to finish off before you go to the gym, now defense, you're trying to contest every shot, offense, if you can't get your jump shot off, you can shot fake and then you've only got one dribble to create another score. So if you shot fake and you can get on the rim in one dribble, which your ability you should, all right, so you can do that, but you only got one dribble. We don't want to turn it into a video game when we're dribbling the orange off it, all right? So it's more of a defensive thing, but if you score on a catch and shoot, it's worth four points. It's the first shooter to six points. So if you score a layup or off the bounce, it's worth one, but we're gonna put a weight on the catch and shoot because we want intent. We want them to come off every single cone, every single screen with that intent. I'm open, I'm re rearing into my shot. Too often, young athletes, catch, they cut just to make a catch. I say any idiot can catch it. Players catch it with intent, ready to go, ready to dribble past shoot. So come off it looking to score, don't take contested shots. You've got one bounce at each cone if you need it. Go. Good, good girl. Good intent, Sarah. Good job, Sarah. Nice. See that? She set that move up with the first move, right? Really good. That's perfect. Excellent. Job. Nice. Good pull up. The other advantage of this drill is it teaches the pull-up. You see that young lady there? She came off it with intent. She used the dribble to create a jump shot. So there's a lot of advantages in this sort of, in this sort of drilling. Here we go, here we go. Six. Good job, Binta. Good job, Binta. Good. Okay, girls, bring it over, please. Now, just before uh, we wrap up and have some questions, because I'm, I'm cognizant of the time, and I'm also cognizant of the most important people's time, and that's these guys, they're going to to the gym. The other reason I want to stop now is I'm scared of the strength coach. Um, so I don't want to run over your time, my friend. I've done that before. Uh, no, it's important that they, they, they blend the two things in. So what we're going to do is we're going to acknowledge and thank these young ladies. We're going to let them go and do their strength and conditioning and then, you know, I'll spend another hour and a half talking. No, I'll spend another you know, five to ten minutes answering questions and, and talking here. This isn't a great gig for young athletes, being clinic demonstrators, it's really difficult because I'm asking them to move at warp speed. They haven't seen some of the drills, yet I want it to be good enough so it, it, you can benefit from it and go from there. And uh, you know, we say this at every clinic, but this is probably one of the few times I've met it. That, that was just wonderful, wasn't it? You know, no whinging about the light issue, no, you know, no endless question, oh, what do you, just bang, get and get it done. And that last drill, when they were playing, you know, I thought, oh, I don't know if I'll show that because it could be bad. Well, it wasn't. It was outstanding. So can we thank these young ladies, please? Thank you.
So, is the whole group going with you, coach? Uh, only the second group. Okay, so the second group, go and get massive. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, mate. That was Shannon Harbo, sorry, mate. Yeah, Nathan's not here. Keep it down to a dull roar, girls. Uh, thank you. Girls, quietly please, quietly. Great job, thank you. Um, so, girls, please. So, we, we've moved at warp speed and, and we had some challenges, but the great thing about that is, is that's coaching, isn't it? The, the great Lindsay Gay's one, I, I heard him say one time that Australian coaches are the most creative and adaptable coaches in the world. Why? The lights go out. We don't say, oh, we'll just can it. Oh, we'll make it work. The kids make it work. They're adaptable. We need to be adaptable and creative at the same time. We get to practice. And it's a school gym. And it's exam time. And of course, we didn't know. We've got to move the chairs. And what do we do? We just move the chairs. What do we do at the end of practice? Just put them back because we know that's what you do. And it's respectful. We get to practice and on half the court, there's gym equipment that we can't move. All right, we'll just have a half court practice. That's what we do. It's not a perfect world. So, you know, it's a little microcosm of what could happen. You know, so it's, you know, I think Shannon did it deliberately to, to prove that point to test me. And so he's cutting edge thinking there. Any questions on, on any of that? We didn't talk a lot early because I was trying to, move through quickly while we had some uh, ambient light. We didn't talk a lot about technique, so I just want to talk really quickly. I'm, I am aware of, of your time, but one of the biggest problems... <laughs> see... Sorry, now, yeah, that's just because you haven't paid the bills. Uh, one, of the, one of the biggest problems in shooting with young players, or players of any age, is they shoot the ball from their palm. You know, they don't lift it off their palm. Can I have that ball for a minute, please, coach? So what I need to do is create that shooting cradle. I need to make sure I use my thumb to elevate the ball off my palm. Now, we all know that. But you can tell if a player doesn't have great rotation on their, their shot, it's because they're a palm shooter or they don't have enough elevation. Now, the role of the thumb is also crucial. The only role of the thumb in the grip is to lift the ball off your palm. That's its only involvement in the shooting mechanism. So when I have my shooting cradle and I shoot the ball, what does my thumb do? What does my thumb do? It doesn't do anything because its only role is to stabilize the basketball. Now, for years we taught hand in the cookie jar. So for years we had you know, multiple generations of, of players that would shoot the ball and we'd talk about their follow through and this would be their follow through. Why? Very literal learners. Up, hand in the cookie jar, grab it out. Bang. Okay? Well, in fact, we should have been teaching them to not only reach up and get one biscuit, but reach up and get the whole pack. Because by reaching and doing that, look what that creates. The thumb comes in, the thumb will create side spin and a different revolution. And what it will do is it will take away stability at the most crucial time, the end of the shot. So as I shoot the ball, if I close my hand to reach in and get that one cookie, 
think about this, it's only going to be a millisecond of time, but I, I can't ba actually balance it there. And that's what we're asking players to do. Now there's a, a, a wide range of different coaches that will tell you different things about which finger it should come off last, all right? Um, and, and, you know, the very fine detail of the follow through. My thing is, whatever you teach is, is fine, as long as you believe it, you can justify it, and you can help the young people understand why you're doing it. But one thing I would encourage you to do is keep that thumb out of the shot. And watch great shooters. When I played, and I played really poorly, I was a poor shooter, so the way my coaches dealt with that, and this is what was done in those times, just don't shoot it. Catch it, pass it, be a screener, rebound, that's your job. So much so, the ball would be on the way, I'd be getting ready to catch it, and I'd hear, swing it, swing. Hey, whoa, whoa, just let me catch it first. Let's see, just pretend that I'm half a threat to maybe shoot it, but there, all right? We don't do that anymore. We know that we've got to teach every young player every skill and we've got to give them a chance and the tools to do it. So fall in love with teaching shooting. Work out what your policies are. Work out your little catchphrases. The one I use is lift, lock, leave. All right, there's, a, there's millions of them and, and they're, all, they're all sound. The other thing is, is the importance of comfort when you shoot the ball. So often we create an uncomfortable physical environment for someone to execute a, a, a skill and a physical activity that requires precision. You see, when the young players, and, and they're so contorted and, oh, and they're so worried about doing everything coach says, they're uncomfortable. Now, if they're uncomfortable, do you think they're going to have a level of success? Now, that doesn't mean that we allow them to stand here and however they like, but a lot of research has gone into now in terms of the jump shot. The term square up, we all probably use it or have used it. The term square up comes from the very early origins of basketball when people used to shoot a two-handed set shot before what we teach now, which is in essence a one-handed jump shot. So it was actually crucial to make a two-handed set shot that you had your feet square, hence the term square up. In fact, now when we shoot the ball, we know that our shooting foot, and we did all those drills where the shooting foot was coming forward, because that opens up this side of our body, it releases tension hip and shoulder, and makes this action a lot easier. All right, so we've, we've adapted. We've gone from square to just moving that lead foot forward. The next step in that is the concept of 11 o'clock. And what I mean by that is, so I'm going to shoot the ball to Paul. I've got my balance stance. I've got my lead foot forward. So it's opened up that side of my body so I can go from a V, an upside down V, to an I. That's what I want to try and create. I've got an upside down V so I'm comfortable. Too often we have players try and get to that I straight away. That's not a comfortable stance. So let them be comfortable. The other thing that will give them some level of comfort is rather than have their lead foot at 12 o'clock or high noon, allow them to have it at 11 o'clock. Why? It opens up even more comfort, right, through here. Now we don't want it at 9.30 because now we're working against ourselves. Our brain's saying, well hold it, how, we should be going this way. But just play around with it. Now I'm not here to suggest that this is the only way to shoot it. I'm not here to suggest that it's shooting according to, to Peter Lonigan and, and go out in the masses and do it. I want you to play around with things. And you know the best way to play around with things? Watch great shooters, see what they do. And then go out onto the court yourself and play around with it. Even if you're a non-shooter, or you might not have a basketball background, that's okay. Every demonstration I did today, how often did the ball leave my hand? 
Not once. I didn't miss one shot. All right? I'm all about maintaining credibility. But go out on the floor in the environment that you want the athletes to do it and just, oh yeah, that does make sense. You know, stand square and try and create comfort through your scapula and your hip. Oh, put that, oh, that is a bit. Oh, actually, that does work. So, you know, be always chipping away at your craft and be open to new ideas. Learn, think, and reassess. Crucial elements in developing as a coach. And probably the most crucial one of those three is the reassess. Be prepared to be open to new ideas. Sometimes we get so stubborn, we've invested so much in our coaching philosophy, and it's important. But sometimes you'll see something that a great player will do. You think, well, gee, they're a pretty good player and it works for them. I'm gonna try that. Or a coach will, will share something with you like we are tonight and think, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna try that. It doesn't mean that you run out and change your whole philosophy, but your ability to reassess and be a flexible learner is going to be absolutely crucial as you develop your coaching. Because it doesn't matter if you want to be a pro coach, a world championship coach, or just the very best association coach you can be, everyone's got the same motivation. How can I do a better job? How can I help the kids more? Because that's what it's about. Every single thing in coaching is about the players. It's an absolutely selfless profession. It's fantastic because your, your whole being is about others, which is a pretty nice platform to, to operate from. Um, I do want to thank uh, both Shannon and Sean and also Nathan Kerwin. Nathan's got some uh, family illness, so he, he's an apology tonight, but I spoke to him today. They've done a tremendous amount of work um, in putting this together at short notice and um, and you guys should be um, thanked also for battling traffic and weather and all those things to, to come here we you know I've got the best job in the world just go around talk to coaches work with elite athletes and try and help pretty cool job um, but what you guys do on a daily and weekly basis allows me to do what I do. So thanks to, to Basketball New South Wales for their huge investment in, in basketball and investment in coach development, athlete development. But the biggest thank you is to you guys for battling all that and coming out. And please keep doing what you're doing and, and please use the resources. You've got terrific, energetic young men here now that are passionate about the sport and they're just starting the, their journey. And I know they're very keen for you guys to, to come along for the ride with it. So thanks very much.